So a lot of you know that in my day job, I also create cost estimates for a large commercial general contractor. Well, I thought that today I'd create a video talking you through how I might create a cost estimate from a SketchUp model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing to focus on is what tool you're going to use to put your actual estimate together. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna do this little mock-up um, so this like framed mock-up and we're gonna put some cost to it. There's a couple ways you could do this. You could create this model so that you get quantities out of it that you could apply to an estimate in something like Excel. So I do a lot of this because it's really quick to pull quantities out of SketchUp doing it this way. We can talk more about that in the future. In this video, I'm gonna focus on doing this using the extension Quantifier Pro. So if you remember, Quantifier Pro is an extension for SketchUp specifically designed to help you quantify things and apply costs to them. So if I was to build this with Quantifier Pro, I'm gonna walk you through how I would do that. So uh, if you are interested in Quantifier Pro, I will link to that in the notes down below. But what you have to think about when you're using a tool like this is what the ways are that you can generate costs, right? So for example, there's four ways of adding cost data inside a quantifier. I will link to a detailed tutorial about this in the notes down below. We're gonna go kind of fast on this one. So basically you have four ways of doing this. First, you can put objects on a layer or a tag and then associate cost data with them. Meaning if I was to take these boards and put them on a framing tag, I could then go into quantifier and tell it, okay, for the lineal footage of board that you're seeing in here, here's what the unit cost is. So you can apply this using attributes of the objects you have selected inside of quantifier pro and see a cost. So if you want to add cost based on square footage of material, there's an option to add material dollars. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to pick a material from the list of materials already in your model. So in this case, our brick, and you can add a cost to it. And then you can tell this a unit cost based on different attributes, based on the area of that material. So in this case, for example, we've got brick in here. Let's say that's gonna cost $27 a square foot. So if we click on this, wanna make sure that we group this object, but then if we click on it, notice how this will apply the cost based on the area of material. You can also apply costs on a per object basis. So let's say you had a window, for example, under object, you can add costs to a window component. So when I select this, so I can say that this window is gonna cost $525 plus tax. Well then you can see how if you select this window, that cost is being applied to the window. If I make a copy of the window and I select them both, notice how each one of them has that value associated with it. So you can do a per each cost on your windows. And then finally, you can also just apply blanket costs to your models. So let's say that you wanted some labor or something like that. You could just apply a cost item in here in order to do that. So you could do that on an hourly rate basis. You could do that on a lump sum basis, but you can use this in order to add those other cost items as well. And I've already got the framing modeled out because I don't want to waste your time um, watching me do framing. I will link to a video below about modeling framing. But probably what I would do in this situation is I would actually start by just modeling out the base because remember, this is going to have to go on some sort of concrete pad. We're assuming this is some kind of a mock-up, right? So just something that we're putting together so that we can see how the conditions come together. But what I would do is I would start by modeling out that concrete pad and I would put this in a group. So I'm gonna group all of my geometry. Um, because Quantifier is gonna be able to read this, um, keeping this organized is going to be pretty easy. But what I would do is I would come in here and I would apply a concrete material to this slab. So something like this one right here. So now I have a concrete slab in here. I wanna make sure that I only apply the material to the top of this because what I want is I want this to pick up the area of that material. Um, and if I apply a material to all of the faces, then it's gonna pick up too much area. So then what we can do is we can pick up a material cost right here and we can select a material inside of our model. And so basically what I'm gonna tell this is wherever this concrete aggregate material is, I wanna add a cost. And I wanna say that this is gonna be maybe, we'll call it $6 a square foot. Um, we can also add a waste factor. So in this case, I might add like 15% or something like that. And then I'm gonna add a material tax. So we'll say it's 8.25. I'm gonna click on okay. But basically what I've done, if I click on this again, 
is notice how this updates your cost in here. And so what it's doing is it's applying a cost based on the square footage of that material. So if we were to double click in here and select this, notice how there's 135 square feet. And just to do a quick double check, not worrying about waste or anything like that, um, we can just do 135 times six bucks a foot. And then we probably do need to figure the waste. So figure times 1.15 right here and then times 1.08 for your tax that gets you pretty close to what this is calculating out so with waste and everything else this is calculating this out approximately where we would want it to be so next I would come in here and I would want to figure out the cost of my framing well for the framing remember that we need to have all of this on a layer because we're gonna apply a cost based on that attribute so notice how when I select all of these right here, um, it gives me the overall length of all of the framing in here. But what I want to do is I want to make this whole thing a group and I want to add a tag called framing. And I want to take this whole thing and I want to put it on the framing tag. So now if we come in here and we click on the layer option, remember layers and tags are the same thing. If we click on the layer option, we want to take everything on the framing tag we want to add an item for this and in this case we're just going to call this two by six wall framing and notice how this allows us to select different inputs well in this case we want to apply a cost based on feet so remember we want to do it based on the lineal footage or the length of those boards so let's say for every one of those boards we're gonna say lumber's crazy right now. I don't even know what it's going for. Um, we're gonna say with labor, maybe this is like $4.50 a lineal foot. I'm assuming labor in here. Now, if you wanted to, what you could do is you could do two by six wall framing material, and then you could add another cost item for two by six wall framing labor, like this. And so then we could say that maybe the two by six is gonna run you $2.50 a lineal foot. We'll add 15% waste and we'll add 8.25% tax right here. And then for the labor, we're just gonna say that the labor is gonna be the same as material, so $2.50 a lineal foot. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna go in when I click on okay, and notice how I wanna click off of this and then back onto it. It's gonna update your cost in here based on the overall length of boards in here. And so then let's say we wanted to double check the way this is calculating. Well, what I would do is I would just jump over into my cost detail report right here, and I would just run that report. So that's gonna show me that my two by six wall framing material, notice how that's getting the waste applied to it. The labor is not. So I can see how this is getting waste applied to my overall footage. I can see where the unit cost is coming from as well as what's being included for tax. So I can see exactly what each one of those is going to cost based on what's in my report right here. Notice how, by the way, if I select both of these, I can see what my overall assembly is going to cost in here. All right, so now we've got our framing and our slab figured out. Well, now what I want to do is I want to figure out my exterior assembly. And again, remember, I am creating a cost model here, not a construction model. So I don't need to come in here and add a whole bunch of extra detail um, modeling out all of the different parts and pieces. Meaning, for example, I don't need to come in here and model, you know, each individual insulation piece in here. If you're creating a construction model, that's fine. Model to that level of detail. I'm creating a cost model and I want to make sure that I'm picking up all the cost. So what I would do in this situation is I would just take this entire thing like this and I'll go ahead and block out the windows. And so I'm just gonna triple click that whole thing and I'm just gonna put that in a group and I might even label the group for what I'm doing here. So I'm going to, and I'll probably put it on a tag too just so I can toggle it off. So I'm just gonna tag it, tag it exterior enclosure right here because I want to be able to toggle it on and off so I can see my framing but for my exterior enclosure what I'm gonna do is first off I might push pull this out maybe like a quarter of an inch or something like that just so I don't get this Z fighting in here so I'm just gonna do a 0.25 here and 0.25 here but then I'm just gonna apply a siding material to this so 
I'm just gonna come in here and we'll apply our white siding right here. So now, what I have is I have an object with a material applied to it. Well, since I have the material applied to it, I can add cost based on the square footage of that material. So, I'm gonna take this material and notice how what you can do is you can find an object in here, so like my cladding siding, and you can add cost items to this. Well, I don't need to model out the insulation and the sheathing and all of that. I can just model it once, and then I can add an item for like, let's say bat insulation, right? And let's say our bat insulation is gonna cost maybe like a buck 25 a square foot. Um, we'll add a little waste, we'll add some tax, but then in this same item, I can also pick up the costs for plywood sheathing. And we'll just say it's 425 a square foot um, with maybe, we may have more like 15% waste on this one, right? I can pick up the sheathing, I can also pick up the weather barrier, and I can pick up the siding all in one item. So I'm not sure what siding is going for right now. We'll call it 10 bucks a square foot with 10% waste. So what that does is that gives me the ability with one item to pick up cost data for multiple different things right here. So now if I click off of this and I click back, you can see how this is calculating cost for that entire assembly. And so if I was to run this cost detail report, notice how for the square footage that's in here, I can see the footage that it's calculating with waste. I can also see the unit cost and the tax. So I can pick up this whole assembly with one modeled item. Do note that you wanna make sure that you only apply this material to the outside face here. So don't apply it to the back face because you don't wanna double count on your cost, but this allows me to do that really easily. All right, so then let's say I was to drop a window in here, uh, maybe for something like, or with something like flex tools. So let's say I was to just drop a window in this opening and I can make some adjustments in order to make it all fit. And so I've dropped this window in here, and then I might drop another one right here, like this. Well, then I've got my two windows in here that I can put in a group and label it windows. But then I could just apply a cost in here for those objects, right? So if I click on objects, and I'm just gonna select the flex window in here. So with the object for the flex window, I'm just gonna add flex window turnkey. And you might break this up into material and labor again, but we're going to say turnkey, we can put this window in for $525. Um, so that's going to vary vastly based on labor and everything else, but that's fine. We're going to do a tax rate of 8.25% again. So now if I click on this window, notice it has a cost. And if I click on this window, notice it has a cost. So the cost for my two windows is already in there. And then you could come in here and you could model out things like your trim and apply a linear foot cost to that as well. Um, so you could definitely get to that level of detail, but I'm just gonna kind of skip over that just to make this video a little bit quicker. But now, all right, so now the last thing, and so now I want to add some cost um, that is basically going to be overall job cost. So it's not anything that's necessarily associated with this building right here. It's more like the supervision costs that you might need overall. So to do that, you would add model dollars in here or model cost. So what we're going to do is we're going to click in here and this is going to allow us to add items um, that aren't really linked to anything in the actual model itself. So we're just gonna click on the plus button. Let's say we wanted like a foreman's time or something like that. So we've got a foreman right here and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add, we're gonna set his units to hours. So we're assuming we're gonna put hours in here based on an hourly rate. And this varies wildly. We're just gonna say the foreman makes $25 an hour. And we're gonna say that for this mock-up that foreman's gonna stay busy for, we'll call it, three days. So at three days, eight hours a day, you're looking at 24 hours right here, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on OK. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to add a cost item. If I click in here, that's going to add a cost item for a foreman at 24 hours. So you can see how that adds that line item in here just like this. And so one thing to note about this, and I've gone back there and coded some of these, is you may wanna add a code to these because that allows you to organize based on like the different divisions or something like that. So for the foreman, for example, I would want him 
to be in division one. So I would just go in here and I would just set my code to be zero one, right? So now if I run my cost detail report, he's in here at code zero one right here. My other things are in here with the other codes. So if we were to look at our framing, for example, so if I was to click on this layer, and we're gonna go to dollars framing. Notice how I've set the codes over here to zero six. So those are gonna be division six costs. But now we've got our whole thing together. And if we select it like this, notice how this is gonna give us the overall cost of our model. I'm gonna click on the button to refresh right here. But now what we wanna do is we wanna run our cost detail report. So we've run our cost detail report in here. This is gonna show us our overall cost. Well, let's say you wanted to export this and work with it more in like Excel or something like that. You could run the CSV file right here and you can export this as a CSV file that Excel can read. So in this case, we're just gonna run this and I'm just gonna overwrite the one that I've already created. You could just name it down here, but I'm gonna click on yes. And then we're gonna click on the button for open exported report. That's gonna open this up in Excel if you have Excel. What that does is that gives you an editable Excel file in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and sort this. So I'm gonna do a custom sort based on my code right here to get these in order. But now I've got all my descriptions in here. I've got my quantities and my units. And then I could come in here and I could build uh, more spreadsheet functions in here. So we could put a total down here. We could do a sum to pick up all these different costs. And so you can use this in order to quickly get your estimates into Excel for more detailed editing. All right, so I will link to a more detailed tutorial on Quantifier on this page if you want more information as well as to the extension itself. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you thought about this style of tutorial. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.